Hello and welcome to Men in Progress, the podcast of the United Methodist Men of Treach here in Flower Mound, Texas. Men in Progress is a part of the Life Plus God podcast series from Treach Memorial United Methodist Church. We really appreciate you listening to this episode. My name is Dave Casey, and often in this podcast, we take a deep dive into the topics that a lot of men struggle with, like parenting, leadership, and our ongoing walk with God. We don't always get it right, but sometimes we do. And in this episode, we're talking to two men and their wives who have more than gotten it right. These are couples that have been married for more than 50 years. At a time when nearly half of all marriages in the United States end in divorce, there's a lot we can learn from these extraordinary couples. Welcome to Men in Progress in our discussion of how to make a marriage last. So my first visit is with Howard and Marilyn Hurlbut. Howard and Marilyn, welcome to Men in Progress. Well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, it's so great to have you guys here. So Thank you for asking us. So to get us started, I'm going to ask you, how many years have you guys been married? 64. And uh, January 30th was our anniversary. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Marilyn, do you concur with that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't keep track of the years <laughs> as quite as um as tightly as he does yes, yeah but i certainly concur all right well i've got a question for you then okay where did you guys meet oh my goodness um in uh junior high we were both in uh junior high is my first memory wow and we both attended the same church after i became a christian how neat. Now, where where was this? In, in Montebello, California, Montebello. which is east yeah. of East L.A., we used to say. East of <laughs> So further out in the valley kind of a little conservative bit. Conservative yeah. Baptist Church. Wow. We... So since middle school. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. So 64 years. So how old? How old, when did you get married? Were you in college or after college? Or? Uh, after college. Let's see. That uh, I still, I think I still had one semester of my master's work uh, right. left when wow. we got married. Wow. Yeah. Wow. How, boy, what a story. Whew. But I'd already been uh, off to basic training in the Air National Guard. Yeah. So. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, okay, this is the toughest question. So, huh? what's the secret to happy marriage? Oh. Uh, how well, about perseverance? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that wearing matching underwear on Mondays <laughs> is a good tip. <laughs> well, gee, you know, we're recording this on a Monday, but we won't ask for verification. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay good. <laughs> All right. Well, that is something else. Well, I've got to ask, uh, see, Marilyn, what's your favorite thing about Howard? My favorite thing about him? Yeah. Whoa. That he's always there for me. Wow, that's super. I didn't know these questions in advance. Yeah, well, that's part obviously. of our part of our deal. Yeah, but it's like yeah. God, David. Yeah, um, Dave, I can always come to God, mm -hmm. and that's how I feel about Howard. Wow, he's just always there for me. Kind of the rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's wonderful. That is wonderful. All right, I'm going to turn it around. How about how about Marilyn? What's what's my favorite, favorite thing, thing about, about Marilyn? Yeah. Oh my goodness, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, I think it's be, <sighs> there's so many things actually that uh, that make us fit, yeah. even though yeah. it might seem sometimes that it, <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, she's. Uh, smart. She's organized. She's uh, loving. She's yeah. compassionate. Uh, All things I've been able to see about her. <laughs> so yes, yeah, that is that's incredible. That is incredible. So when you guys first got married, what was the what was the toughest thing that you faced as young marrieds? Oh. Do you remember, Marilyn? <laughs> Making dinner come out at the same time. I, oh. <laughs> I wasn't used to. <laughs> she wasn't used to cooking. No, oh. no I wasn't at all used to cooking. Wow. So getting the 
potatoes to come out at the same time as the green peas. Yeah, and, yeah. And this was back when she thought uh, cooking was her role. Oh, wow. That, oh, yes. So you were embracing yeah. it. It was uh, just, just kind of uh, learning to make it work. Yes. Um, yeah. But I had to learn that. And um, I know you haven't really asked us anything yeah. spiritual. Yet. Oh, we're getting to that. We're, yeah. You're yeah. getting oh, to yeah. that. Oh, we'll, yeah. All right. We'll have some time for that. Okay. Yeah, that, that was... Uh, I had the opposite problem. See, I married a home ec teacher. Oh, wow. <laughs> and she was a fantastic cook. Oh. And our problem was portion control. Oh. Because she said, well, she had cooked for herself. Now she's cooking for two. Oh. And it was more like she was cooking for a boarding house. I mean, oh. we had a lot of food. <laughs> and a lot of leftovers. I wasn't used to that. You know? So, oh, that's fun. That is fun. So, Howard, what do you think was the biggest challenge for you, being a young married guy? And uh it's hard to remember that far back. That far back. <laughs> I, I, yeah, this is unfair if it's 64 I years. Dear, I agree. Uh, um, I, could put it another, I could put it another way. So what, what, uh, what did you think it was going to be like? And then it turned out it was totally different, you know, when you got married. Uh, you know, if you think about it from that term. Uh, I don't, I don't uh, remember that many real little surprises, yeah. frankly. Well, you'd known each other for a long time. We that had was known very... each other for a long time. Yeah, and uh, we had lots of friends and family who were uh, all supportive. All supportive. Yeah. yeah. Just wondering when you were going to get married. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, let's see. My sister said, well, Howard, you can borrow my car if you take Marilyn out. Oh, how about that? <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a good reason to get a, to go on a date. <laughs> so I got to say, before we go any further, you've got the best radio voice. You should have been a DJ those, this whole life. Is that right? Yes. Really? Oh, well, it, because it, Marilyn tells me I talk too softly. Oh, no. no. Well, this I microphone can't. does wonders for you. Yeah. You <laughs> Dear heart. I tell you, you should have been spinning those discs a long time ago. <laughs> you know. So, Marilyn, here's a question you've been waiting for. So, what what role has faith played in your marriage? I, I guess, Dave, I would say it's... Um, the bedrock. Yeah. Kind of the centerpiece of... Um, of our marriage. Uh, that um, that overall, I mean, I, I, we have some things we thought about to give as practical oh. things that we do. But, um, but our faith is probably... Um, uh, the bedrock of yeah. everything yeah. and and is the basis of our commitment uh, to each other. Yeah. So if you really ask me, um, how did you manage to stay together? Yeah. I, I would say um, because there was no other alternative. Yeah. Because we made a commitment to each other. And to God. Yeah. So it's a three. God. It's like a three-way agreement, right? right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When you look at it that way, yeah, yeah. And so, the things that we kind of talked about that we would bring to you is yeah. um, probably some unique, practical things we do. Yeah, I'd love to hear those. Yeah, I'd love to hear those. Well, let's. Tell them about uh, well, the yes. annual planning session. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we have it. We have an annual planning session. Interesting. This and goes back to your your Arco days. It sounds <laughs> like. <laughs> well, hey, we you know, we usually go away, and oh. sometimes we have gone fun places like, like a San Francisco. Yes. So, uh, like a retreat, uh, yeah, a retreat yeah. to a do a retreat to do Maybe an annual planning. Get a big uh, in January, you know, uh, flip chart yeah. pages and uh, with markers and <laughs> do oh, the whole cool. thing, right? How oh, cool! Six categories. We, the six F's is what we use as a interesting format for our annual planning. And uh, let's see if I forget any. Their yeah. faith, family, fun, fitness. Friends and family. Did yeah. you say yeah. family? I said family already. Yeah. Yeah. Family. Faith, fitness, friends, family. 
and fun. finances. Fun. And oh, finances. finances. That yeah, finances that would make sense. Sixth one, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think those are the six. Wow. So I would run a yeah. spreadsheet every uh, year. That's uh, your IBM January. background now coming yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> right. For finances. For finances, right. you got a spreadsheet. Um, no, no spreadsheet for fun. You just pick no. something. No, and we often started with fun. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the way to go. <laughs> we start with fun reviewing last year. Yeah. Fun, yeah. and then say, what are we going to do this year? Yeah. Wow. That's what we do with each category. Well, how deliberate and how great. And go over yeah. last year's Yeah. Uh, in that category. What did we do? Wow. And so what do we want to do this year? Yeah. That would be an increase. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and, and you don't let things slip away that way. Yeah. You know, right, if you yeah. just, you know, we intended to do this for fun. We never got that done. Well, in a review, you say, well, wait a minute. We, we've we got to go do that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Sometimes life gets in the way. You can't, can't accomplish <laughs> what you want and do that. Well, that is tremendous. The six. And then we yeah. actually added something, Dave, because we discovered that even though we love these six categories, we love just talking about the previous year and thinking about the next year and making plans, but it didn't cover some of the household things. Oh. And so <laughs> we made up a list of all the things that either had to be done right. or that we wanted to be done, like... Um, just sending up. birthday and, and um, greetings, et cetera. And yeah. then we negotiate and pick, <laughs> <laughs> pick yeah, out who we does what. Yeah, then started taking our pick, right? Oh, that's yeah. neat. Like who cooking and yeah. clean up and, um, and... Wow. Anyway, we have about, what, 15 of those, Howard? Oh, my I've gosh. Made. Now, do you involve the kids and grandkids in this, yeah. or is this strictly between the two of you? Uh, this has just, been just the two of us. Just oh, wow. the two of us every year. That's good. Hopefully I mean, you pass this on to them, though. Uh, yeah. Do they know that you do this? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. They yeah. know we do yeah. this. Yeah, that's that's incredible. What a cool thing. <laughs> Speaking of children, yeah. we have a new baby. Yes, I saw the pictures. <laughs> a well-fed baby, apparently. Yeah. yeah. I thought we were going to our grave with no <laughs> oh, uh, great-grandchildren. No, no. You've, you've got a wonderful <laughs> legacy now there. We have yeah. one. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Well, this is another question. I, I suspect I'll know the answer, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Is it, it, how do you guys handle it when, when times get hard, when times are tough? Well, that's a good question. Wait, well, how do you mean tough, Dave? Well, you, you know. mean economically? Well, you it could mean be economically. When could we be just home. get mad yeah. at each other? <laughs> hey, There's I'll that. Tell, I'll tell you one. Yeah. Oh. Is when we had to shut down a business. Oh, oh. goodness, Howard. Oh. Yes. And oh, my. Uh, now that's a that, that has oh. a big effect on a family. Yes. <laughs> we. 1986, we, 80, 86, 87. Seven. Texas oil crunch. Mm. Uh, we thought about declaring personal bankruptcy. Wow! And decided to just sign long-term agreements to uh, pay it off. Work this it was out. with my sister and Dick. With Dick Barb and Barbie, and Dick, yeah. The, yes. the yeah. four of us. Wow! And, and I think that the the best thing about the whole thing is we still remained friends. Yeah. <laughs> That's so unusual because people that go into business with relatives, it's usually a recipe for for oh, problems. <laughs> every every time we met, yeah. we just said, yeah. now remember, we've got to keep the, yeah. the four of us. Yeah, we're sisters and brothers-in-law yeah. first. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, so that took a lot of communication. Oh, yeah. You know, I just know, just knowing you guys, you communicate so well. With others, I'm assuming you communicate very well internally as well with each other. That was a tough time. Yeah. Though. Barb yeah. and Dick moved in with us. Wow. We let the lawn mowing people go. Sure. We let every <laughs> we yeah. Just yeah. went. We were start and we were starting over again wow. financially at fifty. Wow. At That's a lot 50. to face. <laughs> a lot to face. I imagine there was a little bit of prayer involved during oh, that. Oh, are you <laughs> kidding? <laughs> yes, sir. Just knowing the four of you, I knew that that would be. Uh, 
So this is a this might be a layup question. I don't know. This is what's been the best thing about being married for oh. for sixty four years. Oh. 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 Just having, just knowing I can count on her. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I would say waking up with someone in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> There's somebody there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, but, last question. You may, you may have thought about this one in your preparation too. So what would, what advice would you give to young couples just starting out? What would be your number one piece of advice? Mm, number one piece of advice. Mm. Let's see. I think I'll ask my counselor, Marilyn. What would be- <laughs> <laughs> Wise move. <laughs> um, I guess um, uh, I would say it starts before you get married, and it's the advice that um, uh, John, our son John, got. From his um, mother-in-law, mm-hmm. where she said, "Remember, John, we only do this once." Yeah, and <laughs> um, and I would say, um, if you are taking this lightly, don't do it. Yeah, yeah, and this is yeah. a serious, and, and you know, the commitment you guys have made is incredible, and you are committing yeah. before God. Yeah. Forget that's, the official thing. Yeah, Your that's that three-way is to God. Three-way agreement. And, and it was. I think it was helpful to us overall to be uh, mentor, marriage mentors for some time. Yeah, that we did. Yeah. Oh, oh, that, what a blessing to those say, that you were mentoring. Yeah. Say more about that, Howard. Yeah. Is this an official thing you did? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Through Treach. the church. Oh, through the church. Through okay. We were marriage mentors. Wow. I don't know whether Treach has a program like that wow. nowadays, but uh, it did for a long time. And we, yeah, there are several <laughs> couples yeah. in the church that we. That you'd mentored. That's, that we oh, mentored. Yeah, goodness, that's tremendous. Dave, okay. I was out having dinner with our grandson, Clayton. He mm-hmm. and I go to dinner. Um, about once a month and um i went to the restroom and coming back um a couple stopped me a younger couple and um i went oh and they were a couple that we had been marriage mentors for a long time ago and now they have both have kids and everything well we talked I called Clayton over. Then we parted. Then I found out that the next morning she was going to have a um, um, mastectomy. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And, um, and that seeing us or seeing me yeah. had been very uh, calming and meaningful sure. to her. Very inspirational. Yeah. Yeah. Which is um, very humbling. I get goosebumps yeah. when oh. I'm telling you about I'm it. Getting goosebumps listening to you but, tell uh, about uh, it. <laughs> but that, um, that is amazing. Oh. I mean, obviously, that was God at work. Sure enough. But, Just um, putting you guys together at the right yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how fulfilling. What a, what a great thing that you guys have done over the years. Just one of many. I'm aware of many that you've done as a couple and individually. So thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Really All right. Are we finished? You. We're getting there. We're <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> we were, we going to throw in a couple other things. Well, please Marilyn. go ahead. Yeah. yeah, We can put a couple more in. Yeah. Go ahead, Marilyn. Yeah. Tell, tell another one of the four items that we were going to oh. cover. <laughs> you guys are very, so organized. I'll tell you. Um, well, one thing, um, we would say is um, that we are glad that we vacationed instead of um, stayed home to do home maintenance. Oh. So we vacationed with our kids and... um, Then with Barb and Dick. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And with their kids. Because there's always something to be done at home. That's it's it's right. very easy to That's say, well, right. I've got a week off here, a week off there. I'm yeah. just going to do a staycation and get all these right. chores done. Right. And, and you I, made sure that you took the time. Yeah. Instead, yeah. our priority was to 
vacation with the kids. Yep. And so we were been very glad that we did that that obviously created a lot of memories and yeah. for you and for them yeah mm-hmm. yeah 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 and i think if you ask john and dave they would yep. say they were very glad. i know john follows that advice <laughs> <laughs> he certainly does he does uh, uh, he does that um, for our listeners john is their son john hurlbut who's uh in fact i think if he hasn't been on this podcast he will be on soon <laughs> so <laughs> we'll do that um, what were some of what were some of the others he thought about? You said there were four main things. Oh, you had the five or the six Fs, the vacation, yeah, and the yeah. Uh, no I'm, matching underwear. Oh, oh yeah, whoa. the matching <laughs> underwear. I, you know, we needed to put that at the top of the list. Just, <laughs> <laughs> only on Mondays, though. Mondays, that's yeah, right, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Um, what else was there? My <laughs> serious advice is just uh, it's a matter of commitment. Yeah, you you rule out any other alternative other than working out whatever yeah. it is. That well, when you guys out. went through the financial stress, yes. that's obvious that, you know, yeah. you, you had a choice to make and you yeah. made the choice. We're just going to work this out. We're not going to, we're not going to do that bankruptcy thing. We're just right. going to do it. You know, we'll work it out. And that's, that what a testimony to character and to commitment. Yeah. I think, Dave, that one thing I, when I pray every morning, one of the things I do is I write down 10 things I'm thankful for before I start any of the prayer requests. Sure. And um, I am so thankful that Howard is such a devoted Christian. Yeah. I'm so thankful that every morning he has a um, long prayer time. Yep. And. Yeah, and that God put you together. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I know, honey. <laughs> um, the other fourth thing was that every day we say to each other. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. How could we forget that? <laughs> Have I told you today that I love you? Oh. And we really got that from Melva and Bob Jones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we heard that. Another at, long time married couple. At, yeah. 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 Bob's um, yeah. memorial yeah. service. How about that? We her, have her. Have I told you today? Have yeah. I told you today that I love you? Wow. Every day. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's a great way to close our podcast. <laughs> so, All right. okay. Well, thank you so much again for joining Men in Progress. All right. Thank All right. you. We'll thank see you all later. For asking all us. right. We feel honored and humble. <laughs> so our next couple is Harold and Nancy Rogers, longtime members here at Treach. So guys, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Glad so, to be here. So the uh, first question out of the box is how many years have you guys been married? So, oh, it's our see. golden anniversary this year, December 29th. It'll be 50 years. 50 so. years. Big wow. Big. Well, I'm glad you guys both agree on that. That's good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was there. <laughs> you were there. <laughs> well, that is tremendous. What a milestone. That is that is incredible. That is incredible. Time flies. So I got to go back to this. Now, When where did you guys meet? Well, uh, believe it or not, we met in eighth grade math class. Eighth grade. So... <laughs> But he didn't know who I was. Uh-huh. I knew I knew because he was a big football player. Yeah. Even in eighth grade, stuff. he was a big football he, player. He, he was probably the same size. <laughs> oh, my and gosh. He, he was an early developer, and he uh, was just a nice guy. Was and, he good at math? i got to ask you. Uh, he was good at math. Oh, good. And yeah. I was not. <laughs> so I just, uh, I just thought he was just a super nice guy. Yeah, yeah. But then... We never dated until we were seniors in high school. Wow. He dated all my friends. <laughs> that's okay. That's cool. Now, where was this? Where did you guys grow up? Houston. In Houston. Yeah, we were in Houston. Yeah. And uh, I was talking with some friends of mine that uh, about who I should start dating again. Uh, yeah. A good friend of mine uh, was going to date another one to ask another girl I was going with a long time. And my best friend, he started dating her, and they never broke up. Wow. And so uh, I, I, I asked some other friends of mine, which uh, 
who are some of the girls I should be on my radar. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, and Nancy came up. Her oh. name came up, and so I, I I invited her to a good friend of ours was leaving town. There was a party, and I said, "Would you like to go to the party?" To, to uh, Don and uh, she said, "Sure, uh, okay." And I said, well, "I'll come pick you up." I thought it was a date. It wasn't a date with, in her eyes. <laughs> Just transportation. A ride to the party. <laughs> ride to the party. He's, that's what he said. Would you like a ride to the party? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you didn't have any expectations <laughs> uh, and we were there you know. and everybody I, I never saw her after we got there she oh. was gone oh, yeah. the whole night and everybody asked me well who'd you bring i said yeah. well, well i thought nancy was here somewhere but <laughs> if you see her let me know so a party still like that does she disappear into the <laughs> well we, no. no no not at all <laughs> well that is that is wild it is wild so let me ask you what's the what's your favorite thing about harold nancy uh He's still that nice guy that I recognized uh, Since at, a grade. Young, <laughs> as, at a young age. Yeah. Um, he is uh, tenderhearted. He's loving. Uh, he's a wonderful father. Uh, his brain works different than my brain. Wow, that's always complimentary. And that yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. I see, th- I see issues. I see problems. Mm-hmm. I see... Whatever, and I see it a certain way, and he always has a different way of looking at it, and it's it's helpful for me. It's sure. always been helpful for me to to look at it. Makes for a great partnership. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. yeah. So, what's your favorite thing about Nancy? Well, a little everything. Yeah. She's besides being kind and smart, and and uh, she does everything for me. She makes my life uh, <laughs> very easy. Uh, she, you know, she's a great cook. She's she keeps the house just spotless all the time. Wow! And uh, she's organized. I'm not. I kind of just, you know, I'm I'm just there and uh, <laughs> spontaneous. And she's got everything organized and planned. And she makes my life, uh, you know, fabulous. And has since we, you know, wow. started dating. Wow! And um, so yeah, there's a lot of things you could say about her, but she's uh, loving and kind and yeah. just a great mother and grandmother. And uh, her kids would say the thing, <laughs> same thing about yeah. her. So tell us about your family. What kids and grandkids? We have we have a fabulous family. We uh, our first daughter we we had late. We were we only had one daughter. Yeah, our daughter first our, first and only daughter. our first and only daughter <laughs> Anne. Uh, yeah, Nancy and I were but we're the same age. So yeah. our. Uh, she was 30 when we had Ann, uh-huh. and uh, then we had triplet boys at four years later. Wow. And uh, the triplets, uh, that changed our whole life. Yeah, as I uh, <laughs> could only imagine. <laughs> quite a bit. And uh, uh-huh. so that's when we really, that was probably the only uh, rough time in our lives was yeah. uh, bringing them uh, raising them till they uh, probably at least 26 <laughs> before they got smart. And, uh, but, uh, oh, well, that's great. But no, so we have, uh, and they all have families now too. They're all married. Wow. All, um, and married and has one daughter. And then we have, uh, Chris has two sons, our youngest. Wow. Uh, he's got, uh, Luke who just turned five. And then, uh, we've got Isaac who just turned, he'll turn two in two weeks. Wow. And then Travis, uh, he's married and has two. A uh, boy uh, who's Peyton, he's a 16, 17-year-old. 17. 17 wow. And uh, Madison's eight. So then our last one, which we thought Austin would be the first to get married, he and Havana are just uh, celebrated a year. Wow. So I'll let Nancy tell the rest if I left anybody out. <laughs> no, you did not. You <laughs> I was counting there. I think we're up to five. Yes. Five grandkids. Wow. No. Wow. And that's what keeps us busy. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. That's incredible. So... This is, uh, I don't know if this is an easy or a hard question, but you think way back, you know, 50 years ago when you first got married, um, what's the big, biggest difference between the way you thought it was going to be and the way it really turned out to be, being being a married couple? I'll let her go first. Yeah. Well, this is, I can remember this vividly. <laughs> I, and and we haven't said this yet, but I can say it now. Harold and I were both very fortunate to have wonderful parents yeah. and wonderful role models when it came to marriage and and long lasting marriages and just family and yeah. exactly yeah. and so but what we were 22 when we got married so i thought that everybody's parents were like my parents oh. and i thought everybody's dad was like my dad 
And my dad was one of those guys that said, whatever you want, honey. Do you, you want a blue carpet? Fine, get blue carpet. He, he wanted nothing to do with kind of the house and what sure. to pick out and yeah. all of that. And so I went merrily out and thought <laughs> I was going to pick out everything for for our home. And not that we had much of anything. But, yeah. At uh, 22, you're not, you're not picking out a lot. <laughs> no, no, I mean, we had nothing. But as time, but even as time went on, and yeah. it was a, an opportunity to, to go uh, pick out things. Um, this one had a mind of his own. Oh, my gosh. And he wanted to be there with me, and he so, wanted to, he had a, an opinion. An opinion on the carpet and, <laughs> and the I was furniture. I shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so, you didn't uh, think that was his domain, no, right? Oh, no. Oh. I guess my you know, my parents were a classic yeah. uh, 50s, you know, mom stayed home yep. and kept the house and all of that. But yep. um, it it certainly has been, uh, I had to adjust. Sure. Let, let's sure. put it that way. And that was fine. Yeah. But yeah. but I remember being quite Just shocked you know, on flamuxed that. about <laughs> the whole thing <laughs> that he would have an opinion. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did you get any big surprises? <laughs> no, not really. No, yeah. uh, she, she's right. Our parents were both. We both yeah. had came from both uh, loving homes, yeah. and uh, my parents were married forty six, and hers was fifty sixty five. Wow, wow. Yeah. wow. Uh, my dad died early, so that's why. Or they'd still been married. Sure. Um, but no, it was. Um, we saw how a partnership really worked out. Mine never fought ever. And uh, Nancy and I rarely ever fought, uh, still don't hope we don't have more fights. Um, so it was, uh, we're both a a good partnership. Uh, she's got strengths. I've got strengths and uh, we make up for each other's weaknesses Yeah, Yeah. and, uh, patience, you know, you gotta have patience, especially when you have a lot of kids. Yeah. You gotta have patience. You got triplets. (laughs) Triplets. Uh, that was, yeah, that was the, our our roughest time during our 50 years was that, uh, you know, when they turned 13, uh, they don't listen much anymore. (laughs) So, uh, we 16 start driving. You got three of them driving at once. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, those were the roughest years, but, uh, we, we made it through we were committed to each other and to our families yeah so oh that's tremendous yeah well i'll ask you uh you can choose who wants to answer this one first but what role is faith played in in your all's marriage i'll let you go first ladies Uh, first yeah i grew up in the church yeah and i think that for me was i was surrounded by people who who uh were believers and who had strong marriages and who just exhibited it for you. Exactly. And, and their children were brought up in the church. And this was, again, I guess I I had a sheltered life and, and I thought this was everybody. I thought everybody had this kind of support system. Exactly. Yeah. And so, um, but I will say that I went off to college and, and I, I did not, attend church i went through those those That's days of rebellion not uncommon tr- yeah. trying new things yeah. and, and and i will say that it took harold and i a while to get back to church um and certainly once children started coming along i, I just knew that's a big he, impetus and yeah. he did too yeah. because he grew yeah. up in the church and sure and that we wanted that for our family. We knew that was a, a critical piece yeah. of what it took to have this success uh, in family life, and or at least that was on my list yeah. of yeah. things. So, Harold, how about you? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I grew up in an Episcopal church. I was an acolyte at nine, and so for probably for four or five years uh, until I went to college, went to a, a Baptist university, and uh, then married a Methodist, and so been a Methodist <laughs> ever since then for 50 years. Yeah. So you kind of went Episcopal, you swung over to Baptist, and kind of went back to the center yeah, of Methodist. Yeah, we're the center. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's a, such an age-old story. <laughs> and I was involved with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in college, and yeah. so, you know, faith, I've always uh I've been a believer. Yeah. Uh, I almost died at seven in a car wreck. Wow. Uh, hit, hit by a drunk. Man. And uh, was given two days to live. Mm. And so from that point on, I knew there was a, a, a power that Some, wanted me Somebody's around, looking out for you. Looking yeah. out for me. And yeah. uh, there's greater things in my life ahead of me. So yeah. I've always been uh, a believer. And uh, 
it's just been you know part of our lives growing up and yeah. uh, you know it's we've enjoyed we've made a lot of new friends that way it's just i don't know how people turn their back to god anyway yeah, yeah. uh and do not want to be part of a you know a church yeah and uh, there's there's so many the benefits are great <laughs> fellowship of believers is uh is very Indeed. powerful right yeah yeah are there any non-negotiables in your marriage that you guys can name i'm trying to think I can name, um, I saw an interview years ago, I don't know, maybe five, ten years ago, uh, believe it or not, with Sting, yeah. the musician, yeah. and his wife, Trudy, who had been married 30 years at that time, and the interviewer asked that question, mm-hmm. what's the secret? Right? Sure. And his answer, without hesitation, was um, divorce is not an option. Wow. Period. And uh, in a world where it, it's so common oh, in the sure, entertainment world. In, in their world. Their not, world, yeah. You know, yeah. Certainly not my world. But yeah. I I thought I thought, yeah, that that's right. We had never voiced that. We had yep. never I don't even think we ever got an, into any kind of conversation about it, even got that close. Sure. But but I think both of us at our core that just that was that was not on the table at all, mm-hmm. and um, or it wasn't for me. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll put and it me that too. Way. Yeah, yeah. So, I agree with that. Good answer uh, over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just that yeah. was not who we were. No, that's not what no. we wanted. Well, and you guys thought it out so well ahead of time. I mean, having known each other that long, a long time. Yeah, we dated yeah five years before we got married. Yeah. See, she but asked I'm, me to marry her, yeah. so she, we didn't. She didn't say that. So earlier, I'm so glad but. that Doris isn't here on this <laughs> podcast. So my wife and I, Doris, we we dated for a little over nine years, and then we got married. Wow. And uh, so when people go, "Wow," you know, <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah. Because by after five years, it was kind of like the old Woody Allen, you know, <laughs> yeah. quote. Uh, she, Relationships have to move forward or die, like yeah. sharks. Yeah, right? like sharks, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, we were always moving forward. That yeah, was fun. I'm but, sure. but yeah, we kind of, we had those similar discussions. I mean, that was kind of our, our thing. I mean, if you're going to wait that long, and if you're uh, you know each other well enough, yes. you know, it's kind of like this. This is not really something we want to discuss. Uh, so, and you talk, you alluded to this a little bit, but uh, um, where what what uh, role does faith play in your lives when things get tough when 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 things are hard we pray every day i I pray at night when i go to bed and lay down she prays all the time (laughs) (laughs) does that anything to do with you (laughs) there's probably some of that we pray for our kids and and, uh i pray for the world's peace yeah yeah uh, that our grandkids will have have a world left (laughs) yep yep I think that during the tough times, and and I will say this very clearly, not not with any specificity, but a really tough time where I was very angry and kind of at the end of my rope, and this was, I was ready to give up Mm -hmm. on on a kid, and um, and Harold came to me. and talked about Jesus Christ yeah. and talked about uh, God and his forgiveness. And, and where was that, right, in this, in this scenario? And thank goodness uh, he said that because it, it brought me back to a place where I, I needed to step back and yep. really. And so it's, uh, it's, it's always there. It's always there for us. And uh, he has the strength and the quiet strength to, to keep me, yep. uh, kind of facing forward and. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. What's important? Yeah. That is that is superb. So you, I don't know. You want to ta- you want to tackle it, now, <laughs> Harold? <laughs> Just see what. Well, I, I you know, we, fortunately, we've never had really tough times in yeah. our life. Losing yeah. our parents, yeah. losing our parents is probably the the most difficult things we've had mm-hmm. uh, in our lives to face. And uh, so, fortunately, uh, we've been blessed with a healthy family. Uh, both of us are in good health and enjoyed uh, successful careers too. Our yeah. whole working lives. So, fortunately, I haven't 
had to face a lot of difficult yeah. times, but I know I lean on faith when we did have some times with our sons that we weren't sure how things were going to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and you know, um, it all worked out, knew it all would be, yeah. Yeah. uh, that do not fear, uh, things will get better. And, uh, faith is got to be part of your whole life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, especially in today's world, you got to have faith. There's, there's, uh, better things around the corner. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I'm I'm a positive person anyway, so I really never dwell that's on the true. negative, and I think that's helped me and and kept me happy my whole life. <laughs> you know, I kind of got trained into that being in sales. I think, uh, you know, you're always sales guys always look at the the happy part of things. Yep. You know, sure. You know, oh, your building burned down. What you can have a brand new building. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever. Have it any way you like. Yeah, yeah. exactly. What an opportunity. You know. <laughs> so, well, last question I was going to ask you guys. Um, since you have this body of, of experience, what, what, what's the, what's the advice that you would give to a young couple starting out today? You know, young couples encounter a lot, you know, we, we look at our parents looked at us, I think, and said, wow, you guys have all this stuff that I never had to deal with. Of course they dealt with the depression and stuff. So I mean, but, uh, but, but kids today, you know, some of the stuff that Harold was alluding to, I mean, the, the way society is, the way the world is, I mean, it, it, it's hard to be optimistic sometimes to look at kids starting out and, and what are you gonna, what, how are you going to handle this? Yeah. So what would be your advice? Well, we were, I think we were very young to get married. We were yeah. 22, but we, but we had to, you know, we had dated for five so, yeah, years. Yeah, it was five so years of needed, dating. <laughs> we needed to move forward. Yeah. Um, but I still believe that we changed so much in our 20s. Yeah. I really believe that, and and we were from a very large uh, suburban high school in Houston, and and so many of our friends who were dating in high school got married, yeah. and by our twenty fifth high school reunion, I think we and one other couple were the only ones that were still married. Wow, right? you, a lot of you do a lot of growing and yeah. a lot of changing yeah. in your twenties, and fortunately we. We had the same values. We wanted the same things, and and we we made it through that. Um, so maybe but, establishing those things ahead of time before oh, you get married oh, would be a great pre, <laughs> do do that pre counseling. Yeah, do those yeah. sit down and and have the conversation, whether it's with a with a pastor or whether it's with a a counselor or a therapist sure. or something to. To really, someone to help you, the marriage mentoring, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, that we heard a, about before the, the idea of having someone bring up those important topics that okay, let's let's talk about this, sure, um, in a in a very safe environment, right, right? right. And, and where there's somebody there to to help guide the conversation, um, I think for me. Uh, I would say I w- I'm an emotional person, and it never helped when we had disagreements that I would be in tears and he yeah. just, he, you know, would shut down. Then, <laughs> oh, I can't take your tears and yeah. all of that. The the whole idea. We'll go with the blue carpet. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but to to step back, get get cool down. Yeah, cool yeah. down, and then. Let's have this conversation yeah. when we're just kind of learning that skill or yeah, that, that exactly that way to do can, things. Yeah, can do the 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 calm down and let's revisit. I will talk about this later. Sure. Um, that would have that would have served me well if I had learned <laughs> had, that had some of that ahead of yes, time. Exactly. exactly. Oh, yeah. All right, fifty years, Harold. You know, got some good advice. <laughs> well, there 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 should be more than what I would say. Yeah. Uh, that, like I said, I. Uh, she does so much for our whole family that I defer most things to her. And uh, so I'm very agreeable and, and she always makes the right decisions. Yeah. I rarely yeah. have to, to voice my opinion that I like something else, but no, you know, we have to have patience and I know our, our, our love for each other will carry us through whatever it is. And so I don't, I don't worry. She worries for the two of us enough yeah. for the two of us. And, um, but it's just, continue to be uh show support and yeah. respect uh to your yeah. partner and uh communicate talk to when you have problems or issues bring them up 
Yeah. And I, I don't do that as well as I should sometimes. But Actually, he does. <laughs> he, he's, he really is good at it. And I, yeah. and I would add that I was, I had a role model. My father was a, a great one for the silent treatment. Yeah, my father was as well. And yeah. Uh, it yeah. drove me crazy. It drove my mother crazy. Yeah. But then, uh, guess what? I got married and I would get mad and I would start the silent treatment and slamming the kitchen cabinets <laughs> and so on. And one wonderful day, and we had been married a long time, 20 years, 25 years, wow. and I was slamming some cabinet. <laughs> and Harold said, what's wrong, Nancy? And it's the, you know, silence. Yeah. Nancy, what's wrong? You should know what's wrong. <laughs> I can't believe you asked me that question. <laughs> and he got up from the table, came over, put his arm around me. He said, I've known you for a very long time, but I still can't read your mind. That's right. And yeah. I went. <laughs> Shame on you, Nancy. <laughs> Shame on you. And but those are hard things yeah. to unlearn. Yeah. But I worked at it. Yep. And that communication is oh, probably the number oh one gosh. thing. It's you just, know, it's critical. And I've told that same story yeah. hundreds of times <laughs> because I did leadership and management training sure. all over North America, and and people do that. Yeah. They use that silence, and that's a. It, it yeah. kills a relationship. It does. Yeah. It does. Well, thanks so much. It's been <laughs> it's been wonderful visiting and uh, wonderful to get all the inside secrets to a fifty year <laughs> marriage. You have any tips on what? Uh, the, <laughs> should I get her for the fiftieth anniversary? It's a golden year, so oh, oh no. gold. Hmm. It, it, yeah. it, it Gold's will, always in style. Yeah, Maybe some Bitcoin. Yeah. No, 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 no. Thank you. Yeah, I'd, I'd avoid the Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, one more thing. Yeah. One more thing. Use lots of humor. Humor. And that's yeah. what he does. That's yeah. what he just did, right? Yep. Uh, it's when when you're laughing, y- you can't argue, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, so we have we have tried to do that a yep. lot. Well, I've seen you guys do that. Yeah. So that's that's always good. That is always good. Yeah. Well, thanks again. We Thank you so much for uh, for being on our Men in Progress well, good, podcast. Good luck. All right. Yeah. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. So there you have it. Episode 14 of Men in Progress seems appropriate for February. We hope you enjoyed the conversation and that you'll join us again in March when our topic will be Thou shalt not, breaking the habit of sinful behavior. Thank you again to the Hurlbuts and the Rogers for joining me and sharing their wisdom with our listeners. We certainly wish them many more anniversaries to come. Thanks for listening to Men in Progress from Treach Memorial United Methodist Church in Flower Mound, Texas. I'm Dave Casey, and we'll see you next time. This episode of the Men in Progress podcast is sponsored by Treach Memorial United Methodist Church, where our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're in or near Flower Mound, Texas on any Sunday morning, we would love to welcome you to any of the Treach services. Or you can follow our services anytime on our Facebook page, or at tmumc.org.